The continuing ambition of communism for conquest has made necessary for the nations of the free world a policy of constant military readiness. For retaliation in the event of full-scale enemy attack, this country has developed the intercontinental ballistic missile. The speed and low radar profile of the ICBM make necessary a radar defense of very long range. Carrying an even greater payload, the manned bomber offers a highly dependable and flexible weapon. But to offer the Strategic Air Command increased operational flexibility, the United States Air Force visualized the need for a third weapon system type designed specifically for high-speed, low-level missions with high-yield payload to be available in 1965 or soon thereafter. General Dynamics, Convair Division, began under an Air Force Air Research and Development Command contract a development study for such a weapon, which was dubbed the Big Stick. The missile, as proposed by Convair, is cylindrical in shape, 13 feet high, 5 feet in diameter, and 52 feet long. Operational weight, approximately 50,000 pounds. This weapon system is an unmanned, nuclear-powered ramjet missile, capable of sustained Mach 3 speeds at very low altitudes and over great distances. Only nuclear propulsion is capable of this high-energy expenditure. The missile will be launched into flight by a rocket booster. Top speed under nuclear propulsion is over Mach 3.5 at altitude and range, anywhere on Earth. Targets are reached by inertial guidance, programmed to penetrate below the radar defense floor to heavily defended or to hardened undefended targets. Accuracy, one to two nautical miles with all inertial guidance. Delivered payload, a 6,400-pound warhead for one-way bombardment missions. Aside from the high-temperature steel airframe, it has three main elements. Reactor and associated systems, guidance and flight control, and armament. The reactor power plant is 55 inches in diameter. Airflow is provided from the ram air inlet in the nose of the vehicle. The air duct is routed around armament and control sections of the missile to the reactor section. The reactor, being developed by the Marquardt Aviation Company, is maintained at 2300 degrees Fahrenheit wall temperature. Controls are actuated on commands from the inertial guidance system, which is located in a shielded compartment. Armament arrangement gives this weapon its greatest flexibility. In this version, a 6,400-pound device available from present stockpiling is used. An alternate arrangement of the basic missile substitutes eight 350-pound bombs for the single unit, ejecting the bombs over separate targets, and features a highly accurate map-matching system with CEPs down to one-quarter nautical mile. Flight path is programmed in the inertial system, which operates the movable control canards on the forward cowl. These canards produce all yaw and pitch roll movements. Aft fins provide stability. The design ensures high versatility from either fixed or mobile basing. If operated from hard bases in conjunction with other strategic air command activities, the highest level of maintenance and readiness can be easily attained with very short reaction time. At these hard bases, the missile areas would include system and propulsion check bunkers and the associated launch site. Mobile operation, virtually immune to enemy attack, would utilize a vehicle train with tractor, missile carrier, booster trans launcher, and support vehicles. In either fixed or mobile operation, the missile is boosted to flight velocity by a single-stage rocket unit of the Minuteman class, that is, with a burning time of 58 seconds and a total thrust of 178,000 pounds. 
The reactor does not become critical until immediately before launch, limiting radiation hazard for personnel and equipment. On a typical mission, the booster lifts the missile to cruise altitude at a velocity of over 3,000 feet per second. The booster drops off after burnout. Reactor propulsion maintains a maximum rate of climb of 30,000 feet per minute to its cruise altitude over friendly areas. The inlet spike is retracted for cruise. At the point of penetration into hostile areas, the missile reacts to terrain clearance radar altimeter and inertial guidance programming, dropping to the penetration altitude of 1,000 feet for the low-level dash. Sustained dashes of more than 1,000 miles are possible at altitudes down to 500 feet. As the weapon approaches an area defense line, it is below the long-range radar floor, reducing warning time. Moving at Mach 3, it is extremely difficult to defend against without greatly increasing overall radar defense. Working in team with the ICBM, which neutralizes outer area defense, the missile moves on and is expended with the bomb on or over the prime target. The multiple bombing and navigation arrangements make possible a flexible attack plan, which, when coordinated with other weapons, provides a devastating blow to the enemy's ability to make war. This version penetrates the defense area and moves on a programmed attack course, correcting its own navigation errors. Over each selected target, the missile ballistically ejects one or more nuclear bombs. Eight target complexes could be struck in a single missile flight. In the manufacturing stage, the airframe can be produced at minimum cost on the basic principles and production methods already developed and proven by Convair in existing weapon systems. With the specially designed compartment shielding, present guidance systems, and many current subsystems can be used with minimum modification. Stockpiled armament can be used. The simplicity of design possible with this concept makes the missile operational in a relatively short time span. Support and backup methods are easily adaptable from those developed for other systems. To reduce lead time, the airframe will be developed concurrently with the reactor. A chemical ramjet will test and perfect the missile and all systems before the reactor unit is ready for production, assuring early operational delivery. With immediate go-ahead, first nuclear-powered flight will be in mid-1964, with operational units available 18 months later. The Big Stick provides the Strategic Air Command with three powerful new deterrent elements in a single weapon, high payload, operational flexibility, and penetration power. Taking advantage of the development and operating economy possible with nuclear power and existing technology, the Big Stick can be a powerful and timely addition to America's prime weapon arsenal.